What's up guys, I'm Brian Lovett, AKA B-Love. Today we're gonna find out if 3D printing can save you a trip to the hardware store and fix a broken garden hose. Let's get into it. Now, whether you're new to 3D printing or you've been around for a while, you've probably had this question from more than one of your friends. Can you actually print anything useful with your 3D printer or is it all just a bunch of kind of knickknacks? Well, of course you, well, I think you can't. You probably, I'm sure you probably can, right? Well, I, that's why I started this series and what we're gonna do is we're going to explore ways that you can produce functional 3D parts. Things that can actually save you a trip to the store, in this case, the hardware store. You see, a couple weeks ago, I was putting some drip irrigation in my yard and I was using the garden hose for it. I had a high pressure nozzle on the tip and I was trying to go under a sidewalk. I eventually made it, but in the process, I ended up getting the hose stuck and I had to cut the end of it. So we're left with this little bit of sadness. I can no longer attach any attachments to this hose and use it properly. Now, rather than go to the 3D printing community like I should have in the first place, I went to Amazon and I picked up this brass adapter. You see, this typically slides down inside the hose and then it gives you a brand new surface over here. The problem was, it wasn't very clear from the description what size this was. It said it fits 5 8 inch hoses, which is what I had, but it's 5 8 inch outside diameter rather than inside diameter. So as you can see, it doesn't fit. In a fit of desperation, I went to order a new one and instead thought, why not check out some 3D printing? I'm sure there's gotta be something out there. I came across this. So before we get to the repair, let's talk about how we printed this and why we chose this. You see, the thing I like about this model is that it's two pieces and there's no additional hardware needed. You'll simply slide this piece onto the hose, insert this into the tube, and then thread this onto the body like so. And it's got these nice grippy nubs on it. So it should be nice and easy to install, tighten, and get going. And then these threads are perfect for the hose. So I like this design because you don't need any additional hardware. With this one, you have to use ugly hose clamps on the outside of the hose, or there's this big bulky metal piece you can stick on there. This just seems like a more elegant solution, assuming it works. So then how did we 3D print this? Well, we 3D printed this out of PETG. PETG is the same thing that they use to make things like water bottles. The reason it's a good candidate for this instead of something like PLA is because this is going to be exposed to the elements. High temperatures, water, rain, snow, ice, that sort of thing. PLA tends to be fairly brittle. It also isn't very watertight. Most of the objects that I've printed out of PLA tend to break down over time. The sun can break them down and extreme heats like you would experience outdoors can actually cause them to warp and melt. This has a higher melting temperature. It's still pretty easy to work with. It's not something like ABS, for example, that gives off some terrible fumes. And so because of that, it kind of has these ideal properties for this type of project. Now, the other cool thing is I was able to print this with 100% infill. And so if you take this and you hold this piece and this piece, if I had my eyes closed, they weigh about the same amount. So this solid brass piece weighs about as much as this. So it's, it's a pretty solid, well-constructed piece of material. And also, I mean, those threads are pretty beautiful. I think this is gonna work out well. And should I need it, I can always 3D print a TPU gasket for this. TPU is a flexible filament that allows us to print cool things like gaskets and seals and bands and things like that. But of course, that's not why you're all here. You're all here to see if I can make a fool of myself. I mean, get this to work. So let's get started and see what we can do. Now, I know it's entertaining watching me kind of struggle with this thing, but doing this kind of made me think, what if instead of having these barbed fittings you had almost a like self-tapping screw so you can kind of just screw this in. So you put kind of screw threads on there instead. It could create kind of like an Archimedean spiral pump action and actually gravity feed water out of it, which would be kind of counter to what we want to do. 
but perhaps you could sort of intersperse these barbs inside of there. Maybe something to test. Maybe it's a bad idea. But what I am going to do is heat the end of this up. It's a little bit more difficult than I thought to get this down in here, and I think heating it up would make it work a little bit easier. But mostly, mostly, I just wanted an excuse to break this out. I mean, how often do you get to use a flamethrower for a legitimate purpose? All right, try not to burn your face off. There we go. Fired right up. And now we'll just kind of very gently heat the end of this while trying not to burn my face off. Oh, that's much better. All right, so I didn't really get any further. That was attempt two, and on top of that, I forgot to put this ring on, which is kind of a problem. So let's pop that back out. What about some lubrication? All right, round one and two failed, so let's try some silicone lubricant. This Spray a little bit of that in there. And we might as well get a little bit on here. All right, try again. So we learned a couple things there. One, this thing is harder to get on than I thought. We ended up using silicone spray, but even that wasn't quite enough. I actually had to take it and start banging it into the concrete as hard as I could just to get this to slide up. But the other thing we learned from that is this thing is darn tough. This PETG, you can't even tell that I was slamming it into concrete and I was hitting it as hard as I could. So this thing's durable. Don't let it fool you. I don't even know if that brass head could have taken that kind of abuse. So let's go ahead and slide this collar up and hopefully the threads still align. All right, so we've got that in there and this, this collar actually comes all the way up to that area where the hose was squeezed out and it actually applies a decent amount of pressure to there. Now, whether it's sealed or not, remains to be seen but that sure is tight and this this textured collar on here makes that so much easier so I've gone ahead and added my sprayer to this as well I just noticed that my sprayer the top of it is actually broken maybe I need to 3d print a new one of those and in fact I saw a number of sprayers online that you can 3d print drop me a line in the comments if you want me to test out some of the 3D prints of sprayers out there and do a video on that as well. But in the interim, let's go ahead and see if this actually holds water. All right, we just turned on the hose and I mean, this feels like it could turn into one of those blooper videos real quick where the end of the hose sprays off, but actually it's fine. Where it's screwed in here, the, the device itself isn't leaking at all. And the only drips of water I have are actually out of the, the sprayer where the sprayer meets with the 3D printed part, but it's just barely dripping. That's really not bad at all. I think I could probably print a TPU gasket for this and we'd probably be off to the races. I think we'd be fine. Now, in case you don't believe that this actually has water in it, well, There you have it. 3D printing one, hardware store, zero. Better go water some plants now.